What went wrong with your last partner? Story 1. She went back with her ex, but forgot to break up with me. We should just have a support group for these situations. An ex of mine would tell me that I was everything she wanted in a partner. We got along with each other's families and our parents got along with each other. Everything was great, and I thought I found my person that I was going to marry. But then she told me that she was still in love with her ex, and proceeded to gaslight me by telling me every bit of good chemistry that we had was in my head trying to justify her awful behavior. We lost, but forget these people. They don't deserve us. Don't worry bro, mine lured me into thinking she needed me but ended up hitting me, verbally abusing me, and falsely accusing me of crimes, all while I continued to think that she had mental issues that I could help her with. Then she had my son and lied in court and won, her word versus mine, a protective order, sole custody, and a bunch of other stuff. Five years later, CPS knocked on my door, asking if my son could live with me because his mom was nuts. Consider yourself lucky. You know who never does any of this to us? Our pets. Story 2 she lived 1800 miles away. When we first got together, she mentioned moving back to my city in a few months. I thought that meant like six. She thought it meant 27. Once the timeline disparity became clear, I told her I wasn't sure it was going to work. Since I need a partner, I get to see in person more than once or twice a year. She said she'd be okay with it if I went out and got my needs met as long as she didn't have to hear about it, but I declined. I didn't want that kind of relationship. Good news is, the very next date I went on became my wife. I love this story. You know why? Two people realize they made assumptions about being on the same page. You mention it and clarify what you know you want. She doesn't tell you you're wrong or to get over it and suggests a compromise that might work. You decline and you both move on. It's just so respectful and mature. Though, to be frank, reality may have been messier than the retelling. I met a lady on a travel assignment and fell hard for her. We started talking and meeting up for little get-togethers. Then I had to leave the city and asked her if she wanted to keep things up, and I'd try to come back ASAP. She agreed and we decided I'd help my mother with foot surgery she was having, and then I'd come back. My mom had her surgery around February of 2020, right before COVID. COVID. By the time I was able to come visit, we'd grown apart, unfortunately. I don't know if COVID never having happened would have changed anything, but it was hard not being able to see each other. When a long-distance relationship is barely even a relationship, it's time to call it quits. Story 3 we got to a point where we either had to get more serious or had to end, and he wasn't ready to get more serious. Still sad, but getting through it. We were exclusive for about four months and had been seeing each other more casually for about six months before that. But we didn't get to the phase of really integrating each other into our existing lives. It was like our relationship lived in its own little bubble. Our bubble was great, but I was ready to pop it, and he wasn't. He was also super focused on work right now, and I don't think he's in the place to give any outside of work his full attention. It was tough because I know we had a great connection, but just couldn't get there at the time. I related it to buying a house. I found a house in my neighborhood that I loved, him in this case, but it wasn't for sale. Maybe someday it'll be for sale and I'll still be looking for a house and that house will still have what I want, but if it never goes for sale, I can't just wait around. My wife and I briefly dated for a time when neither of us were ready to date. We broke it off but reconnected years later and are now married. So Sometimes timing matters. Sometimes people just meet at the right or wrong times in life. Maybe if people had met at different ages, when they were more mature, or even less, things would work out differently. Story 4 he wasn't over his ex. Still isn't. No matter what we did together, how much time he spent glued to my hip, how many new restaurants and cities and countries we've been to, he would always find a way to link the experience back to her. After one and a half years together, we're breaking up on Sunday. He doesn't know it yet. Wish me luck. I had a tumultuous relationship with an ex for a few years until he ended things by leaving me after his birthday and basically ghosted me for a few months after we had been off and on for three-ish years. After he resurfaced and texted me out of the blue, he acted like we had always only just been friends and had started dating a guy he met on Instagram that commented on a picture of him that I took of us in bed together. They got married about a year later. It has been 
10 years since then, and I have been with my fiancé for 9 years. I still have the occasional intrusive thought about that piece of garbage, but my fiancé understands and we have had at-length conversations about him and my past. Just because your boyfriend broke up with someone, they don't just clear the hard drive and do a memory reset. I can agree that he shouldn't talk about her all the time, but if he was with her for a long amount of time, she's probably going to come up, especially if it's only been a year and a half. If he dated her for like a week, that's a different story. I was interested in a guy who previously dated a girl for six months. He told me it had been two years since the two of them broke up. The issue with it is that he kept deciding my actions for me. You will do X and Y just like she did. Oh, well, X is going to happen because Y happened in the past. I understand it takes everyone their own time to move on, but it wasn't okay to shove it onto me like that, you know? Sometimes people just move on to the next relationship to try and get over the last one. Most aren't as obvious about it as these guys. Story 5 she cheated on me after five years total together, the last of which was engaged. Cheated on me for months, all while I'm planning the wedding, working part-time and going to graduate school so I can support us comfortably in the future. I planned on giving her everything I could and sharing the rest of my life with her, and apparently she didn't care. This is unfortunately the status quo now, and you'll be villainized in every version of her story. I hope you eventually found someone who valued you as a person though. This was only a few months ago, so I'm just taking taking my time, working on myself to become the best partner I can be for whomever my future wife is, and counting my blessings. Even though everything I knew fell apart, it made me realize how rare real trust is, and that I have so much to be thankful for. Same here. I accepted being the villain of the story eventually. First I hated it, and once I moved on with my life and found happiness and success, I began to enjoy it. Story 6 we just broke up last weekend after being together for 13 years. We fell out of love and our personalities had grown apart. She was a hard person, clinical and objective. I'm softer and more emotional. We also suffered from extremely bad communication, and on top of that our sex life deteriorated over the years. We're still young and deserve to be happy, just not together I guess. Almost the exact same situation we had gotten together when we were 17. I ended it about this time last year after 10 years together. He was always serious and cynical about most things, and I like to think I'm the opposite. For years, I thought I was the problem. He would constantly drag me down. I choose to believe he didn't do so intentionally, it was just how my brain interpreted it. He begged me to go to therapy and the psychiatrist to get myself together, which I did. After a year of therapy, I finally realized that I wasn't the problem. We just weren't compatible anymore. I kept bringing up issues to him and he would just tell me that's not really a problem, just get over it. I know for a fact that I have changed a lot over the years, and I remember telling him a while back how much happier I am with the person I am today. He responded with, I don't like who you're turning into, I wish you were the way you used to be. And honestly, that's probably when I should have ended it. Gave it maybe two more years after that and eventually I just couldn't take it anymore. Good for you. Knowing yourself and owning your journey is the best thing you can possibly do for yourself and those who love you now and in the future. That is wise. If you're young, there's no reason to stick it out like that, but then again, if you're old and miserable, I don't see why you should do that either. Story 7 I started drinking again became a miserable jerk due to my own depression and crappy job. As such, she didn't get the attention she deserved, and had to put up with my awful mood all the time. So, she left. I don't blame her, so it was me. I don't know if I trust myself with a relationship again, but aside from the shame of knowing I hurt someone who I loved, and loved me back, but I was too self-absorbed and selfish, I'm trying to be a better human to everyone. And to my ex, you'll find someone again, someone better. That is a very mature outlook. You know that you aren't ready for for a relationship because you have your own problems that you are dealing with and that is perfectly okay. I've known too many people who have so many emotional and mental problems who instead of working on themselves, distract themselves with countless relationships, hurting others in the process. You'll find love again, man. It'll just take time. Shame is like fear. It's useful until it takes over. When it is used as a goal to become a better person, it serves a useful purpose. Knowing what you did makes knowing what not to do easier. And while you might have screwed up, 
up, if you stop screwing up, you become a better person. Me not being the best partner to my last ex hurts. I was distant because I thought I was supposed to be. I wasn't present in our relationship because I was too insecure to be who I really was or to show her that I really did care about her. She dumped me, as she should have. That hurt slash shame made me step back and look at myself, made me want to be different, to be better found a new person, worked to communicate, worked to listen, was more open and honest, and it felt great. I felt better about myself, her and us. She's my fiance now. Self-reflection is painful, but in many cases it should be. Nobody can lie to us or feed us bullshit as well as we can, and sometimes we need a shock to snap out of it. Sounds like you're snapping out of it. The process might hurt, but that hurt makes it memorable. In a weird sense, that hurt is good. When the next person finds you, you'll be that better someone. Someone. It's refreshing to read about someone so honest about their situation. Most people sadly just blame everyone else in this day and age. Story 8 I communicated how I felt about many things in the relationship. He never communicated about anything. I'm guilty of this and boy do I regret not being able to open up about my feelings. It cost me my marriage, but now I'm trying to be more open and share my thoughts and feelings. Just wished I could have done this earlier than later. In a relationship, dealing with things by myself isn't always an option, or shouldn't be. Sometimes not being talkative about issues makes the other person think you don't care about what's happening. A relationship is also supposed to be a partnership. It doesn't all need to be done alone. My ex-husband wouldn't talk either, and when I brought up issues, he also wouldn't address those. I don't know whether he tried to deal with things himself, but I felt ignored after I brought it up repeatedly over the course of many, many months, and I never heard anything. Eventually, I resented him and decided to leave. That was when he wanted to try and deal with things together, but that ship has sailed by then. He made it obvious by his actions that when I thought it needed addressing, it wasn't important, but when he thought it needed addressing, that it was, which showed me how he valued me. Talking and communicating is the key to every human relationship and interaction. Without it, there simply cannot be a relationship. Story 9 my last boyfriend dumped me because I got mad that he was coming to Dallas after I hadn't seen him for two months, but didn't want to see me. He was going to meet up with some friends of his he hadn't seen in a few months. I told him that was fine with me, but I felt he should make time to see me too, since we hadn't seen each other in two months and we were supposed to be a couple. He responded to my anger by ghosting me. That was two years ago. Similar situation here. We lived in different cities a few hours apart. We had been going through some tough times, but her birthday was coming up and she said she was coming to my city for her birthday weekend. I said, great, come on by and we'll celebrate. After waiting all weekend with radio silence, I realized she wasn't coming to see me and just wanted to rub it in. In my case, he lived in Wichita Falls and I live in Dallas. Our relationship was very casual. He would come to Dallas to visit every other weekend and we would spend the entire weekend together. One day, both of us had serious overloads at our jobs and we couldn't get together for two months. When he finally contacted me to tell me he was coming to Dallas, I got excited and said I couldn't wait to see him. He texted back that there was an anime convention in Dallas that weekend and he was going to spend the weekend there and hang out with his friends from his anime club, whom he hadn't seen in several months. I said I had no problem with him visiting his friends and going to the convention, but I thought he should spend at least part of the weekend with me. He responded by calling me too needy and then blocked me on all social media and on his phone, and I haven't heard from him since. In these unfortunate cases, I'm sorry to say, but the guy is just not that into you. If he was, he'd always pick you over his friends. Story 10 He wanted a big family, like six kids, all natural. Obviously, he wouldn't be birthing them. This was very important to him while I was pretty ambivalent about kids, and the further into my adulthood I've gotten, the more I realized I just don't want to be pregnant. I broke it off so we could both get the lives we wanted. He was also quite a bit more conservative than me, and at the time, closeted pansexual as a person. And some stuff he believed just didn't line up with what I believed. It hurt, but it was amicable. Now he has a wife and kids like he wanted, and I am happily partnered and child-free. It worked out for the best. I know several couples who should have broken it off years ago because of the wants kids slash doesn't want kids debate. One of my best friends is in a miserable relationship where he doesn't want kids, but she does, and they only ever fight about it. They are both too afraid of ending up alone. They are dragging each other miserably through life while alienating all their friends and family because of how toxic they are. 
Yeah, that's kind of how I felt about it. It ended early for this reason. Once I saw how important this was for him and how much my own desires for my life diverged from his in major life-altering ways, I figured it was better to let go as soon as I realized it than try to force what either of us wanted on the other, or sit around just kind of hoping it would change someday, with neither really being happy. It was sad because I really liked him, but it could never grow beyond a certain point. I think some people start out wanting kids, but things change as they get older and life paths reroute, another reason why it's better to wait to have kids. Story 11 She hated that I had a healthy relationship with my family and was trying to find ways to sabotage it. As a woman who doesn't have a great relationship with her own family, I have nothing but love for my partner's family. They are encouraging, supportive, caring, they share emotions and feelings with each other and the little pointless news that goes around in families. It's weird, they hug a lot. It's something I definitely didn't grow up with. I get jealous about it sometimes, but I really don't have to be. His family gives me all the same love they give him. I cannot for the life of me imagine trying to sabotage something so profoundly good in my partner's life. Who goes around ruining good things for people they love? You have to be a skid mark of a human being to try and ruin a healthy family dynamic. Similar to mine, she hated my sister and mother because she had a bad relationship with her sister and mother, would get mad at me whenever I brought up my family. My ex had a terrible relationship with her family and in response, my own took her under their wing. At first, she loved it, but soon resented them and took it out on me. We split up soon after. Some people just can't have nice things. Story 12 I'm lost in my own trauma and mental illness, and he deserves better than anything I have to offer right now. I've been on the receiving end of this, and mildly said, it absolutely ruined me. Her trauma and mental problems were bad, but I still wanted to be with her. So if you ask me, as long as they can give you the space and support you need and want to be with you, then let them make the decision. It's also fair and mature to care very much about someone, but realize that you can only have the emotional bandwidth to take care of yourself right now. I'm sure it was very hard for both of you to come to terms with that decision. I don't think it's that he deserves better, I think it's that your attention needs to be on guiding yourself through this thicket of trauma and mental illness before you can be someone else's partner. You can love each other very much, but also acknowledge that you don't have the tools to spare for a relationship right now. I'm proud of you for focusing on your own mental health, and someday, when you have more emotional stability and energy, I hope you find a wonderful partner. It sounds like you're projecting your own self-hatred onto him. It's good that you can admit this, but I hope you know it's just an illusion. Story 13 Seven years of putting me down, telling me I should be glad he deals with me because I'm just a useless whore nobody wants, and I believed him. Then he cheated on me and I was glad because that was finally reason enough to allow myself to leave. It's terrible how good people's good hearts can keep them trapped in hell. I'm so glad you got out. I remember telling someone it would have been easier for me to leave my now ex-husband if he hit me rather than constantly insulting me. When I heard myself say it, I realized how awful that sounds. I was worth more than that. Sometimes, saying something out loud finally makes it hit home how messed up your situation is or was. Hopefully it gives you the power to change it. Story 14 told me she wasn't ready for a relationship. A few days pass and she tells me she has a new boyfriend, and she tells me she doesn't give a crap that I felt hurt. She's one of the many reasons why I don't date anymore. It was just the fact that she didn't feel ready for one. I thought when she was ready, then we'd get back together, so it made me feel like she lied about not being ready if she was able to get with someone else. When a woman says she's not ready for a relationship, that is her trying to let you down gently, because A, women are socialized to be nice, and B, women often have an extremely valid fear that if they reject a man openly, they will be violently assaulted or murdered. It seems like she just isn't into you and was too much of a coward to tell you straight up. Since that's the case, I'd say she isn't worth your time and you could do much better. Story 15 at the time, I thought the relationship was great. We had good communication, we had a good routine, love and trust. Over time, I got complacent, wasn't as romantic as I used to be, wasn't as spontaneous as I used to be. We've overcome a lot together, so I thought we could finally nest for a bit. We moved in together, got a dog together. We really were gonna go all the way. I lost some muscle, gained some fat, and decided to work less hard so I could chill even harder. She decided she wasn't attracted to me anymore and decided to end the relationship that she was young and needed to experience more of life before settling down, that I wasn't what she wanted or needed. I don't really know at what point
point she decided I was no longer the man she fell in love with, but that brought on feelings of inadequacy in me and I started putting up walls. Relationships are a two-way street, and I wish she had communicated her needs to me more. But as the rose-colored glasses came off, I realized she was really selfish throughout the relationship. I started to realize the little moments in life where she just didn't give a damn about other people. Little things like not holding doors open for other people, never going out of her way to do anything for anyone really, including me. She's not a bad person, and I don't hate her for making me feel the way she did, or for treating me like crap at the end. Such is life. Now I get to be with our dog, 24-7 at the least, and I hope her life is all that she wanted it to be, and I hope mine can be as well. It's a journey, brothers. We will all make it through. Pretty similar situation happened with me and my ex. Add in that he cheated with and left me for the co-worker who was just a friend. When everything happened, he didn't care one bit for the dog we adopted together that he just had to have. So by default, I got full responsibility slash custody. We had a really healthy, happy thing. He gave up, never communicated a single issue and jumped the fence for greener grass while I was still watering our side. You're not alone. People like that make horrible long-term partners because they can't put the work in required to keep a committed relationship going. Maybe he'll change and put the work in for her. Who knows? I'm sure she probably did communicate what she wanted. She probably asked him to pick up after himself and do his own laundry, which she probably ended up doing for him anyway. Then on the weekends when she wanted to go kayaking or skiing or some other fun shit, he probably said he just wanted to stay inside and play video games and eat snacks or drink beer. My aunt passed away and my ex decided to adopt her dog even though I said we couldn't do it. Then she left me a year later. I still have her 10 years later with my partner of 7 years. The best revenge is living well. Story 16 he cheated and when we fell apart, he then stopped talking to our child because he didn't want to financially support her or legally claim her. I gave him options, one of them including no child support and just at least seeing her every once in a while and I have not seen him since. The bar was on the floor and it was too much. He does not pay child support but he also has no legal right to her. It was all about money to him. Don't worry, there are people like me out there who are willing to act as a loving parent to a child. I love my stepdaughter more than anything in this world. It sounds like you got lucky. I would want nothing to do with that piece of crap. Story 17 too much to mention. He would say I am to blame. He ended the relationship because I was a little disappointed that my name in his phone was just my name. I never thought it was that serious, but on top of him being secretive, hiding me from family, hiding me from friends, refusing to say I love you over the phone when he was in public, not being intimate with me, not giving me any kind of attention, any times we spent together were shared with him playing video games, found joy in making me cry, would scream at me until I was unresponsive and shaking, I have PTSD. Threatened to hit and kill me? Yeah. Suffice it to say, it's his fault. I'll love him forever because deep down I know he is just a small child who was abused and abandoned, just like myself, but I will never forgive him for the pain he put me through. He has to earn that kind of forgiveness, and I can't even imagine how he will do that. Him refusing to say I love you over the phone in public reminded me of that scene in Godfather when Clemenza was scolding Michael for doing exactly that, so who knows? Maybe you've escaped the sad fate of Kay. Hey stranger, that sounds like an incredibly unhealthy relationship and I truly hope you heal from it and move on. He doesn't deserve your love. Honestly, it sounds like this guy could have eventually really hit or killed you. Glad you got away, but I don't think you even need to give him forgiveness. Just forget him, small boy inside or not. Story 18 Married for 16 years, we could never communicate efficiently and argued way too much over very silly things. Sex life became really dull around year two. We'd be kind of kinky and suddenly it was once every two to three months. We had a child by year nine. Wife struggled with postpartum depression but had prejudice against seeking help. Once a child was born, the wife completely gave up on the relationship. Even the dog, which used to be her life, was left aside. I was very unhappy, but doing things I thought would make her see how great a husband she had, being a loving parent, a good listener, interested in her work, keeping the house tidy, doing all the boring chores, I'd think eventually things would turn around. However, instead of recognition for things I did, I got criticism for things I didn't do as she thought I should've. She'd go to bed by 8pm while I was cleaning the kitchen, 
giving medicine to the dog, walking the dog, grocery shopping, and the list goes on and on. To add insult to injury, she made fun of me when we were with friends, whereas I always tried to bring her confidence up by emphasizing her strengths and how proud of her I was. In the last year of our marriage, my wife began to really struggle with anxiety, making it clear to us that not treating depression properly was now showing its consequences. I feared being alone and rejection more than being unhappy in a marriage, and worried about our child not having what I saw as regular parents, so when she asked to separate, I said I didn't want to. We briefly tried therapy, but it was clear that all actions she was taking since separation was brought up were indeed toward separation. In the end, we talked because we knew what to do. I know I will be better off this way. She'll likely be better off too, but I still struggle when I think about my child's future. Not because it's unlikely she'll be happy, but I just don't have any experience with parenting done by separated parents. I'm still getting over it, but each day that goes by, I'm more and more liberated, and I think my ex also feels the same. Unlikely this will get any attention, however it does feel good to write about it. So sad. My wife was a much more violent, calculating, and unhinged version of this. Similarly, I did all the home chores even though she was a stay-at-home mom, and it was exhausting. Nothing made her happy for long, and just by the time you hang the last home sweet home decor on the house, we need to talk, then she wants to move again. Divorced her five Five years ago, she's been through five serious boyfriends and moved five times. Our daughters live with me and they can't stand her for more than a day. I had the same fears you did and our society's marriage beliefs are all tuned to, well if the husband just did A, B, and C and X, Y, Z, she wouldn't have acted this way. No, that's not how it works. She's been with five different guys and still acts the same way. She was violent to our children and even her own family. That's not a marriage problem. I grew up with parents like you and your ex. Dad does everything and mom complains that he does everything wrong. They've been married for 45 years or so, and it's just gotten worse and worse as time goes on. I wish they had separated when they were younger and had time to rebuild their lives without each other. You guys are making the right call for yourselves and for your child. It's terrible when mental illness slowly takes over someone's personality like that. I hope she's doing better now, and you too. Story 19 I dated a career, 16 years, firefighter that left the job six months into our three-year relationship due to regular stress and post-traumatic stress disorder. Seeing horrible things as a first responder, etc., his mental health declined even more rapidly after he resigned. He refused to see a professional as he saw it as someone telling him how to live his life. I stuck in there and was supportive for as long as I could be. He almost never left the bedroom unless he was going to his job, which I found for him and he hated. We never did anything as a couple, and he was never affectionate, and said he was just like that. He sold me a totally different person in life when we first met. I tried my best until it started affecting my mental health. We left on friendly but very sad terms. He didn't want to help himself and I couldn't take it anymore. Long after the fact, I wondered if his identity as a man was wrapped up in being a hero slash firefighter, and whether leaving the job, as bad as it was for his mental health, made him spiral into a much worse place. Maybe I'm overanalyzing, but it makes me sad to think how the ingrained toxic masculinity surely destroyed an otherwise good man. Oh hey, it's me with the same story. My ex wasn't a firefighter, but they had their own mix of trauma and PTSD to work through from past experiences. Six months into our relationship, COVID happened. His work contract expired, and both because the lack of jobs due to the lockdown and because of his trauma and anxiety, he essentially just gave up and started drinking and watching TV all day. Our sex Sexual chemistry evaporated as I turned gradually into a caretaker. Nothing changed for three years. He was particularly resentful towards his mother, who was keeping him afloat financially, and with my help trying to push him to seek out therapy and get working again. Eventually I realized that someday or another, I would very likely take his mother's place and that he would start to resent me too. We had a tearful and heartfelt breakup. I really like the guy, but the way I see it, I… I wasn't dating him anymore. I was dating this depression monster that had strangled him into submission, and I just couldn't do it anymore. It's sad when guys with such potential can't ask for help because of some macho bullcrap. There is no shame in going to the doctor for a broken arm or broken brain. It's all part of the same body. Thanks for watching until the end. If you have a similar story that you would like to share, please leave it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave us a like and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Yet. 
For more videos just like this one right now, please stop by our channel or pick one on the video screen at the end of the video. Thanks again, and see you next time.